In this video, I'm going to talk about horizontal and vertical asymptotes uh, for rational functions. And we're going to take a look at six examples here. And uh, each one of them is going to be different in its own way. And the first one that we're going to look at is f of x equals, we have 2x over x minus 3. So the rule for finding vertical asymptotes is you take the denominator and set it equal to 0 and all the values you get for that are going to be vertical asymptotes as long as they're non-removable discontinuities. So x minus 3, we can't cancel x minus 3 with a numerator so it's going to be non-removable so we're going to set it equal to 0 and when we solve that we're going to get x equals 3. So that's going to be a vertical asymptote right there, x equals 3. Okay, so what are the rules for horizontal asymptotes? Well, for horizontal asymptotes, we're going to look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So the degree of the numerator here, we look for the highest power, and it looks like 1 right there, so the degree is going to be 1. And in the bottom, we look for the highest power, and it's going to be x to the 1, so again it's 1. So the rule goes, if the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same, then it's going to be y equals, for a horizontal asymptote, it'll be y equals the ratio of the numerator's leading coefficient to the denominator's leading coefficient. And remember, leading coefficient is just the coefficient of the highest degree term. So we've got 2 and a 1, so 2 over 1 is just going to be 2. So we have two asymptotes for this function. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. The next rational function that we're going to look at is going to be g of x equals, and it's going to be x minus 4 over x squared. So as we looked at on the previous example, we're going to take the denominator for a vertical asymptote and set it equal to 0. And again, as long as it doesn't cancel out with anything, as long as it's a non-removable discontinuity. So if x squared equals 0, we know that x equals 0. And that's going to be a vertical asymptote for us, x equals 0. Okay, the rule for the horizontal asymptote now, we look at the degrees again, and we say the degree of the numerator is 1, so I'm going to put degree is 1, and the degree of the denominator is 2, because we have that squared right there, so the degree is 2. Okay, so if the denominator's degree is greater than the numerator's degree, then we're going to have y equals 0 for a horizontal asymptote, and that's just the rule. If the numerator's degree is less than the denominator's degree, that's just going to be a y equals 0 for a horizontal asymptote. So this function has two asymptotes, one vertical and one horizontal. So for our third example, we have h of x equals another rational expression. So x squared plus 4 is in the numerator, and 4 minus x squared is in the denominator. So let's go ahead and find our vertical asymptotes. Okay, so we're going to take the denominator, set it equal to 0, and we can factor this, so it would be 2 minus x, and 2 plus x equals 0. And then we just take each one of these individually, so 2 minus x equals 0, and 2 plus x equals 0. So this one ended up, ended up being x equals 2, and this one ends up being x equals negative 2, and you can work that algebra if you want to. So we have two vertical asymptotes. I'll put the VA down here, vertical asymptote. So x equals 2 is one of them, and x equals negative 2 is one of them. Okay, so for the other uh, one, the horizontal asymptotes, if you recall, we look at the degrees. So the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Looks like the numerator is going to be 2, because the highest exponent is 2, and the denominator, the highest exponent is 2. So the rule for horizontal asymptotes, if the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same, then you take y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. So x squared has a coefficient of 1, and this negative x squared, since it's minus and it's negative, it's going to be negative 1. So it's going to be 1 over negative 1, which is just going to be a negative 1. So for this example, we have three asymptotes. We have two vertical asymptotes that we found, and then a single horizontal asymptote. In our fourth example, we have the function f of x equals uh, x cubed plus 2 on top and x minus 1 on bottom. 
So as we've been doing, I'm going to go ahead and find the vertical asymptotes first. So vertical asymptotes here. It's going to be the denominator set equal to 0, so x minus 1 equals 0. So if I solve that, it's just x equals 1. So that's going to be my vertical asymptote. Okay, so my horizontal asymptotes, we need to look at the degree again. So it looks like the degree of the numerator is 3, because we have this cubed, and the degree of the denominator is going to be 1, since it's just x to the first. And uh, for horizontal asymptotes, if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. So the only asymptote we have in this example is a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. In our fifth example, we have the function g of x equals 5 over, and we have this x squared plus 1 down here. So as we've been doing, let's go ahead and find the vertical asymptotes first. So we're going to set this denominator, x squared plus 1, equal to 0, and solve it. Well, we can't actually factor this, because x squared plus 1 is prime. It's the sum of squares, which is not factorable. So there's actually not going to be any vertical asymptotes. None. Okay, but the horizontal asymptotes, we can always uh, look at the degree here. So the degree of the numerator, no variables, so the degree is 0. And the bottom, it looks like we have a degree 2. And the rule, if you recall, for horizontal asymptotes of rational functions, so if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, then it's going to be y equals 0 for our horizontal asymptote. So in this example, we have one asymptote, it's horizontal, and it's at y equals 0. And this is going to be our sixth and final example. We have h of x, our function, equals x minus 1 in the numerator, and then x squared plus 4x minus 5 in the denominator. So as we've been doing, vertical asymptotes. We have x squared plus 4x minus 5, we're going to set that bad boy right equal to 0. So we're going to factor this, and we're going to get x minus 1 and x plus 5 for our two quantities. It's interesting because, look, x minus 1 is going to be one of our factors, but we also have x minus 1 on top of our, that's our numerator up here. So we could rewrite this as x minus 1 on top, and the quantities x minus 1 and x plus 5 in the denominator, which means these two would actually cancel. So when you're looking for domain, of course, you do need to keep this guy into consideration. But since he is removable, which means he factored out, there's just going to be a hole in the graph, and there will not be a, an asymptote. So the only asymptote that we need to worry about is, is x plus 5 equals 0. So it's going to be x equals negative 5. So a vertical asymptote, x equals negative 5. So for our horizontal asymptotes, we can go back to the degree here. So the degree of the numerator is 1. Looks like the degree of the denominator is 2, because we have x squared. And for horizontal asymptotes, if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, then it's going to be y equals 0. So this graph is going to have two asymptotes, a vertical at x equals negative 5, and a horizontal at y equals 0.